Ruth. Look at Ruth chapter number four. It's already taking place. It's already taking place. It's already. Look, look, look at Ruth. It's already, it's already taking, taking place. Taking place. Taking place. All right. Look, look at Ruth chapter number four. I'm, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Because I, I'm trying to tell you here, there are sheep out there that don't have a shepherd. Amen. And we need to go and get them and bring them in. Now, there's some folk, they were good for Theodore Green, but they just don't work over here. Amen. And I know I don't want to. I don't want to offend anybody, but, but some people, they were good for your last season, not for your next. Hello, somebody, and, and you can't be afraid, amen, to keep pushing to where God has promised you. Is that all right? All right, all right, listen, 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 we'll talk about that later. Uh, Ruth chapter number four, drop down to about verse number nine, and then I'm going to need your help to do something, and then we're going to uh, serve the table, and then we're going to come down from this place together. Is that all right? Amen. I see God doing great and mighty things. All right, all right. Uh, look at somebody and tell them we're in the day called redemption. Look at them on the other side and tell them we're in a day called redemption. All right, this is the day that God is going to redeem, redeem. Uh, there are some folk that needed this word. I don't know where they are. I, I don't know where they are. I feel it in this realm of the spirit. Amen. But uh, you, you get as, as best as you can and help. Amen. Relate to them that we're in a day called redemption. So when somebody asks you what day it is, it's not Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. It's called redemption. All right. Now, uh, look at uh, verse number nine of Ruth chapter number four. It says, and Boaz said unto the elders and unto the people, ye are witnesses this day. Ye are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was a limelax. And all that was Chilion's and all that was Milan's of, of the hand of Naomi. He says, you witnessing, you watching this happen. That I've gone and bought all that belonged to Elimelech, all that was belonged to Chilion, all that belonged to Milan of the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth the Moabite, the wife of Malon, have I purchased to be my wife. To raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren and from the gate of his place. From the gate of his place, ye are witnesses this day. Look at verse number 11. It says, and all the people that were in the gate and the elders said, we are what? Witnesses. And the word of the Lord is blessed. You may be seated. You may be seated. The word of the Lord is Bless. Let me close this text. Uh, I really don't have time to preach it, but I do my best to impart it. Uh, I want you to understand something, my brothers and my sisters. Grab hope to every word, amen, that proceedeth out of the mouth of God today. Father, I thank you. Uh, the fundamental foundation of our biblical presentation is that salvation is a result of faith in the finished work of Christ. You don't walk out of here with anything. Understand that the foundation of our biblical presentation is that salvation is the result of the faith, the result of faith in the finished work of Christ. Somebody said, well, that sounds good, Reverend. Give me a Bible for it. Well, the Bible calls us to understand in Ephesians chapter number 2. The Bible calls us to understand in John 1 and in John 3. In Ephesians 2, in verse number 8, it says, for by grace are ye saved through faith. That not of yourself, it is the gift of God. You didn't have anything to do with it. Absolutely, positively, had nothing to do with it. God did it. Look at somebody tell them God did it. God did it. God did it. God did it. It is not of works, lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. Well, the Bible also calls us to understand in John chapter number 1, verse number 12, it says, But as many as received him, to them he gave he power to become the sons of God, which is them that believed on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, nor of the will of man. But it says, but of the will of God. So therefore, it is God's will. Look at somebody telling me it's God's will. It's God's will. Uh, it even calls us to understand in St. John chapter number 3. Lord, help Jason Brownlee here. In verse 36, it says, he that believeth on the Son hath what? Everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. Uh, it is imperative to understand 
that the foundation that our focus, the foundation uh, that we stand on is that salvation is the result of faith in God. Somebody say finish work, finish work, finish work. In other words, before God starts the thing, he finishes it. <laughs> so everything that you are believing God for has already been done. <laughs> hey, that's why the saints of old used to say you don't have to wait till the battle is over you can shout now because you already know in the end who's going to win and, and so now I, I want you to understand something here and that is that faith does not end at salvation faith does not end at salvation however faith begins with salvation uh, this is imperative for you to understand this here, for you to comprehend this here. Faith does not end that salvation. So you don't get to salvation and go, I'm saved, and then that's it. And you put a period there. No, you put a comma, and you continue to live by faith. You continue to live knowing that, guess what? That it's already done. It's already done. It's already done. My healing is already done. My deliverance is already done. My provision is already done. The protection is already done. Look at somebody and tell them it's the beginning of my faith. It's the beginning. Uh, 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 how do you know this preacher? Because it's echoed throughout scripture here in Habakkuk chapter number 2, uh, verse number 4. It calls us to understand that the just shall live by faith. Do I got to talk back church this morning here? That the just shall live, somebody say, by faith. Well, it calls us to understand in Romans chapter number 1, verse number 17, that the just shall live by faith. So therefore, the thing that started you must be the thing that sustains you. Mm, my God, look at somebody telling me it did not end at salvation. It started at salvation. So when you became a Christian, when you asked God into your life, it was not the end, it was the beginning of your walk of faith. I ain't getting no help right there. Well, well, he goes on to tell us in Galatians, I'm going to help you here, in, in chapter number 3 of Galatians, if you would, look at verse number 11. That latter part says, the just shall live by faith. Well, there it is in Habakkuk 2 and 4, there it is in Romans 1, 17, there it is in 3 and 11, that the just shall live by by faith, by faith. Well, here it is to add more to it here. In Hebrews chapter number 10, verse number 38, it causes us to understand now the just shall live by faith. In other words, if you're living in any other, uh, <laughs> any other way than by faith, you're living out of order. You, 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 you are living out of order. And this is what God has to do. He has to rearrange. He has to get you back to the place to where you understand that it is not your job. Yeah, oh Lord, I somebody messed up right there. Uh -huh. it, it, it is not your income. It, it is not your connections that sustain your life. It is faith, faith. Now, now, if you can believe, hear me, God, that Jesus died on a cross you never seen, <laughs> shed blood you never touched, to transform your life before you ever committed a sin, you mean to tell me you can't believe that he can turn a situation around in your favor? I, how, how many folk in here really know that you're saved? Not believe, but you know that you know that, oh, come on, somebody. I thought we had more saved folk in here than this. So, so, how many folk that no devil in hell could convince you that you ain't saved? You, you know you saved. You, if, you don't, if, you, if you don't know nothing else, I know I'm saved. And I'm sanctified. Oh my God, I got work to do in here. How, how many folk in here know you say, if you don't know anything about me, don't talk about my degrees, don't talk about my accomplishments, don't talk about the songs I've written, don't talk about the books I've published. If you want to say anything out of my bio, just tell them that I'm saved. <laughs> oh Lord, I'm going to find me a church in here. Look at somebody and tell them I'm saved. I, you know, I remember when folk would get excited about being saved, but, but, but now people get excited about being seen. Uh -huh. If you never know my name, just know that I'm saved. Lord, I just need about 50 saved folk. Jump on your feet and decree and declare, come hell or high water, I'm saved. I'm, I'm, I'm saved. I'm, 
I'm, I'm saved. <laughs> Uh, if I never drive a Bentley, I'm saved. If I never live on Sugar Hill, I'm, I'm saved. If I never wear tailor-made clothes, I'm, I'm, if I never sit ringside, I'm saved. If I never had flow seats at the playoffs, I'm saved. If my team never make it to the Super Bowl, I'm saved. Lord, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we've got to get excited about salvation. It's the finished work of Christ. See, you got to understand something. But because Jesus gave us, because God gave us Jesus, shall he not give us freely all things and sometimes you going after things and forget the thing that he did give us. Uh, look at somebody and tell them he gave me Jesus and if he never gives me another thing else that's more than enough oh lord i'm so tired of these oh my god pseudo christians that get excited about beamers bins and bentleys and get excited about clothes and cars and and and, and jewelry when we gonna go back to just getting excited that i'm saved oh my god look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor do you not know that you are saved by the blood of the lamb <laughs> had it not been for the shedding of blood there would be no remission of sins and you start getting so into your flesh that you think that is better out there than in here look at somebody and tell them I'm saved in the ark I'm saved in the ark now, now, now understand something be seated here be, be, be seated here so the just shall live but now, now faith is the substance of things evidence of things uh -huh. so, 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 so therefore I don't have to see it to believe it I believe it and then I okay am I talking to anybody in here that becomes the theme song of your life that I don't have to see it to believe it I believe it and then I see oh my god and do you not understand the bible calls us to understand in Hebrews 11 that the minuscule level of faith is predicated upon what you can have but as you mature in faith, it's not about what you can have, but what you can handle. Look at somebody and tell them, I know I'm living by faith. Huh? Because if I told you half the stuff I had to handle, you would wonder, how in the ham and cheese are you still in your right mind? How in the Mahalia Jackson are you still putting your feet on the floor every morning? Look at somebody and tell them, because I'm living by faith. So when I start looking at my hurts, Start looking at my pains. Start looking at my disappointments. Uh, start counting the tears that I've shed. Uh, I come to the righteous resolve that guess what? Uh, I'm just living by. Faith. <laughs> so, 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 so I'm, I'm living by, by, by faith. I'm living by faith. Now, now understand something here, uh, uh, if, if you would here. Uh, look at Luke 8 because I want you to understand that everything we as Christians believe everything that we as Christians obey everything that we as Christians become requires a consistent regimen of faith yeah 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 e e everything that 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 we believe you 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 know you know you start out yeah I, I, I believe God I ain't never seen it, I ain't never touched it, but I, I, I believe God. And true belief uh, is, is not uh, how well you shout. Okay, okay. True, true, true belief uh, <laughs> is, is not defined in your Jericho run. No, no, no. True, true belief is defined in your total obedience. See, don't tell me you believe but you won't obey. Oh, I don't lost them on that side. Let me come to this side here. Don't, don't, don't tell me you believe God, but you struggle obeying God. I, I believe God can make a way out of no way, but you don't obey him and give him tithing and offering. Lord have mercy. I thought somebody would help me right here. I, 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 I believe God can handle my enemies, but you don't obey him by keeping your mouth shut and blessing them that wrongfully and despitefully use you. I believe God can save anybody and change anybody, but you don't obey him and tell somebody about the God that saved you. Oh, Lord have mercy. Look at somebody and tell them, my belief, oh my God, is seen through my obedience. A lot, a lot of us, we want to believe our way into blessings. I, I believe my way into it. I, I believe my way. No, no, baby, you're going to obey your way into it. 
I ain't getting no help. Well, you need Bible fraud. Abraham considered to be the father of faith. Oh, my God. But the Bible says because Abraham obeyed God. There it is. See, your faith can be seen in your obedience. Obedience. See, it was it was oh, it was faith. It was Abraham's obedience that brought him to the place of blessings. Watch this here, because had he not obeyed God, he would not have been blessed the way he's been blessed. See, a lot of times you think it just stops at your belief. No, baby, you got to take another step and get to the place of obeying God. And because he obeyed God, he became the father of many nations. Uh -huh. So anything that we as believers obey, watch this here, and believe and become requires a consistent regimen, somebody say, of faith. Faith, a faith. I'm coming on around the mountain here, and you have to understand something, my brothers and my sisters. That's what the enemy is after. He's after your consistent regimen. He's after that thing that you keep doing, even in the face of adversity. He's after that. If he can get you to quit, he's got you. If he can get you to stop, he's got you. You do understand that faith don't go back. Faith only goes forward. I ain't getting no help. And so sometimes when you find yourself, oh my God, at the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army behind you, and you're saying, God, what do I do? God says, faith forward. Uh -huh. And that's what the enemy is banking on. He's banking on you giving up on your consistent regimen. Mm. My God, I had to cut a preacher off the other day. We were talking, and he started talking this stuff about giving up and quitting. I said, oh, the devil is a liar. I'm about to cut this call short right now. He started talking about, well, you know, if the people of God don't do this and don't do that, my wife and I are going to pack up and go somewhere else. I said, are you serious? You mean to tell me the people got a monopoly on you like that, that they can control whether you go forward or go back? I ain't getting no help. I said, you show sure God called you? See, because if God called you, I I don't care if the people don't listen. I don't care if the people don't show up. I don't care if the people don't give. You got to come to the righteous resolve that for God I live and for God I die. But if people got you looking and you think that your success is in the hands of people, no wonder you addicted to social media. No wonder you addicted to putting selfies on Facebook. No wonder you addicted to your Instagram because now the enemy has deceived you into thinking that you perform before the people instead of in the presence of God. Would you look at somebody and tell them, I don't care what you say about my praise. I don't care what you say about my prayer life. I don't care how you talk about me behind my back. At the end of the day, I got to stand before God and God alone. And I'll be daggone if I'm going to allow the enemy to cause me to go back on what God promised me. Look at somebody and tell them don't you let the devil win in this season by causing you to take your hands off the plow and look back and go back on what God promised you I need seven folk jump on your feet and decree and declare I'm going forward I'm going forward I'm, I'm going forward and sometimes the enemy will allow you to face some adversity he, he allow you to face some resistance God will use the enemy to say, Jay, I'm going to go over there and let you, let you walk in the 3250, but when you get over there, I'm going to let the people get slack. And I'm going to really find out whether your focus is on me. Okay, I ain't getting no help. Uh huh. See, see, the apostle Paul said it like this. I'm preaching better than you're saying amen. The apostle Paul said it like this here. I've learned how to be up and down. I, I've learned how to be hungry and full all at the same time. He says, I've learned how to be above and abased. And then he stepped back and said, you know what? I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. If you can only function when everything is right, look at somebody and tell them that you ain't ready for the impossible. Uh -huh. if, if, if you can only keep going when everything seems to be dotted and crossed, then baby, you ain't y'all look at somebody and tell them, I thought you said you was ready. Uh -huh. If you can only face forward when everybody is in their seats, then baby, something is 
wrong. But if you can preach like there's 10,000 people in here when it ain't but less than 200 in here, then God simply says you can be trusted with it. Uh -huh. If you can tithe on a dollar, then I can give you a thousand. If you can tithe on a thousand, then I can give you the 10,000. If you can tithe on the 10,000, then I can give you the 100,000. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's what the enemy is after. It's after your consistent regimen. The Bible talks about it. I'm coming on around the mountain. Trust me here. The, the Bible talks about it in St. Luke chapter number 8. Sister Nikki, he says in, in, in verse number 11, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside, they that hear then cometh the devil <laughs> and taketh away the word of their hearts lest they should believe, obey, and be... I ain't getting no help. So, so he's there to take it because he know if, if it rests there long enough, <laughs> you're going to start believing, you're going to start obeying, and then you're going to become. So he's got to take it away quickly. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, once he's got you, <laughs> Uh, he's got you. Uh -huh. So he says, you got, you got to keep on. You got to keep on. You got to keep on pushing. Why? Because there's a day coming. There's a, there's a day coming. There, 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 there's a day coming. You've yet to reach there yet. But, but there is a day. A day coming. See, see, understand something, my brothers and, and, and my sisters here. Uh, I'm just about there. I'm just going right up the road here. Uh, your faith uh, is being developed. The foundation of your faith the, rudiments of your faith, the fundamental uh, a process of your faith preacher, is, is being developed and it has to be developed watch this here, not on facts but truth <laughs> uh, it has to be developed, not on facts but, but truth and, and sometimes uh, if, if not careful mother, what will happen is, is that we'll start believing the facts and start denying the truth all right, right, okay. See, see, fact is that there's a pain in your body, uh huh. And ain't no need of you walking around to my no, ain't no pain. No, no pain is there. You, you can feel it. Fact is there. Fact, fact, fact. But truth is by his stripes. I am healed. And, and so you, you got to learn how to put the truth over the facts, uh huh. See, see, fact is money is funny and change is strange. But truth is, the Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not. Well, fact, fact, fact is that it feels like I'm getting weaker day by day. But the truth is that his strength is made perfect in, okay, am I talking to anybody that you had to open up your eyes and admit that there are some facts, uh-huh. Fact is, everybody in my family has come down with this sickness, but the truth is, God, you let me live with stuff other folk died with. Uh -huh. Fact is, I feel like the least are left out and the looked over, but the truth is, I've been chosen by God. Fact is, everything is on my shoulders and I am in charge, but the truth is, but God is in control. Uh -huh. Would you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't be fooled by the facts. Uh -huh. Put a comma there and not a period yet because every place that God said you've got to face the facts get ready because I'm getting ready to cause you to understand the truth I need you to encourage your neighbor and say neighbor I'm looking at the facts but I'm standing on the truth and the truth is that there's a day after this one and the day that I'm believing God for is a day called redemption I need you to lean over on your neighbor and say neighbor there's a day coming and that day is now and that day is called redemption I find somebody that's real close to you and tell them I'm so glad that you did not give up on the truth even in the face of the fact I'm so glad that you did not scratch your head and turn back and go back to where God brought you out of because of what you were dealing with. Lean over on your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've got to deal with some fact, but I'm standing in my truth, and my truth is that this is the day of redemption. 
I've got to get on out of here. But I need about 30 of y'all. Help me close this text. So you come to the reality that I'm standing in my truth. When you start looking beyond what you see, you come to the reality that I'm standing in my truth. Despite observing the fact, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the truth of the matter is that God is ready and that God is able and that God is willing. Look at somebody and tell them so that I can understand that God is ready, God is able, and God is willing. How do I get to that place of stepping into the truth that God is ready, God is able, and God is willing? I'll tell you how you get there. You start making decisions not based off of facts but based off of truth am i talking to anybody in here today that you gotta make some decisions and you're saying god i don't want to mess up i don't want to do things without first hearing from you lean on your neighbor and say neighbor make the right decision because the bible calls me to understand in Ruth chapter number one that Elimelech made a decision when things got rough for him and there was a famine in the land he made a decision the bible says he retreated and went down to a place called Moab Moab come from the Moabites he went to a place according to Deuteronomy chapter number 23 where the people were not permitted to go up and worship look at your neighbor and say neighbor don't make that decision to go to a place where you can't open your mouth don't make that decision and go to a place where you can't give him glory for the bible the bible says after he made that decision he died in that place grab your neighbor by one of their hands and say neighbor don't die in that place well i've got to get on out of here but the bible says in ruth one that naomi made a decision after her husband died and her two son-in-laws died and her two sons died she made a decision and that decision was to return back to bethlehem look at your neighbor and say neighbor you've got to make a decision to return back to god because it's the lord that's been sustaining you for the bible says in one and six of ruth that she arose with her daughters-in-law and that she might return from the country of moab i don't know who i'm talking to but is there anybody in here that is made up in your mind that not only will i not retreat but i've got to return back to that place in god where i got excited just about being saved i've got to return back to that place in god when i was happy with jesus and jesus alone lean over them and tell your neighbor before i retreat i then got to return back to that place that i believe god could do anything but fail grab somebody else by one of their hands and tell your neighbor there's another decision that has to be made and that decision is what opera did don't do what opera did the bible says that elimelech retreated the bible says naomi returned but the bible says that oprah rejected grab your neighbor by the hand and tell him god is getting ready to give you some hard facts he's getting ready to tell you the truth about the things that you've been wondering about but make up in your mind that after you hear the truth you're gonna stand on the truth not on the fact i've got to get out of here but before i go the bible said naomi called ruth and opera together she said i want to tell you some facts i'm up in age now and i don't have no more children and even if i met somebody lord have mercy time wouldn't give me enough time to raise them up 
to be good husbands like this. And the Bible says that when Oprah heard these facts, she turned and went away from her. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, when you hear the facts, don't retreat, but keep on keeping on. I've got to get out of here, but before I go, Lord have mercy, lean on your neighbor and say, neighbor, there's one more decision that you're going to have to make. Remember, Elimelech retreated, Naomi returned, but Oprah rejected. But I got to tell you this before I get out of here, and that is what Ruth did. Ruth did not retreat, but Ruth decided that she would totally rely. Grab your neighbor, say neighbor, neighbor. This is what God wants you to do. He wants you to totally rely. But the Bible says, and Ruth entreated me not to leave, but to return from following after you. When you totally rely, she said, where you go, I'm going to go. And where you lodge, I'm going to lodge. Your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. That's what it means to be saved and sanctified. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he tells me to go, I will go. Grab your neighbor for the last time and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I've had to make some decisions. And this decision that I'm making tells me to totally rely. I've got to get out of here. It don't make no sense for y'all to act like that while I'm acting like this. Lean over on your neighbor and say, neighbor, after you rely, the next day is called redemption. Am I talking to anybody in here today? You've got to understand that God is not a God that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man that he should repent. For the Bible says in Ruth 1 that they were in the days of the judges, which simply means they were still under the government of the law. And the Bible tells me in Matthew 5, verse 17, that Jesus did not come to destroy the law, but he came to fulfill the law. Lean on your neighbor and say, neighbor, you've got to understand that redemption was a part of the law. There were some things in the law that maybe you were not mindful of. There were some things in the law that maybe you skipped over. But in the law, with redemption of property came the responsibility of marriage. Tell your neighbor when God redeems your property, he's getting ready to take care of you. When God redeems your mind, he's getting ready to take care of you. Is there anybody in here today that's making up in your mind? Lord, don't just fix my land, fix my husband. Lord, don't fix my property and leave out my wife. Lord, don't just fix me, but remember my children for the Bible. The Bible says, I ain't thinking about y'all. I feel like preaching. The Bible says that she met a man by the name of Boaz who was ready to redeem. And I heard the Lord say, I'm getting ready to redeem you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, get ready for redemption. Take me higher. For the Bible says that not only was Boaz ready to redeem, but he was able to redeem. Lean over on your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's just not ready, but he's able to do anything but fail. For the Bible says in Ruth 4, verse number 4, he says, if thou will redeem it, go on and redeem it. If thou will do it, go ahead on and do it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's just not willing 
he's just not ready but he's able to take me up one more time and I'm getting ready to go to my seat but the Bible says he was ready he was able and he was willing is there anybody in here today you know that God is ready to do it you know that God is willing to do it but you wonder sometimes if God is going to do it for the Bible Lord have mercy cause me to understand that now unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask him or think according to the power the power that worketh get out of your seat go find somebody and tell them he's ready he's able and he's willing to do it so you can count on it rest in it consider it done for the Bible Lord help me the Bible said that he took her and purchased her and made her his own lean over them on your neighbor and say neighbor I've been purchased by the blood of the lamb I've been bought with the price he purchased me he redeemed me he was ready he was able he was willing that's why they hung him high stretched him wide and for you and I he bled and died but that's not how the story in three days later he rose he rose look at somebody and tell them he purchased me he redeemed me when I was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore deeply stained within sinking to rise no more yeah. stand on your feet this is the day of redemption this is the day of redemption. How, how, how do I know that this is the day of redemption? Because I'm standing in truth over facts. Fact is that there was a nearer kinsman, but truth is Boaz was ready, able, and willing. Fact is, Ruth wasn't from there. But truth is, she had somebody like Naomi guiding her, showing her how to handle this and what to do. Fact is, you're dealing with some stuff that don't seem to make good sense to you. But truth is, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Fact is, you got some folk that's negatively looking at you thinking that you're not going to make it. But truth is, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Fact is, some folks talking negative stuff, saying things that they ought not say about you. But truth is, no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises against you in judgment shall condemn. Grab that neighbor by the hand and tell that neighbor, I know you got to deal with some facts. But stand in your truth. Tell them, and truth is, this is the day of redemption. You could have retreated and went back. But the reason why you're here today is because there's no retreat in you. Look at somebody tell them ain't no quit in me. You could have retreated and went back. When things got rough for you and things got tough for you, you could have gave up and said, man, that's it. I can't deal with this stuff no more. 
this is too much. Am I talking to anybody in here that made up in their mind, I'm going forward? My life dealt you a dirty deal. I said, I'm going forward. You had to make a decision that I'm not going to reject it. Can't promise you nothing. Don't look good for me. And there's some stuff now that just don't look good for me. The truth of the matter is, I, I can't tell you that once I get here, it's going to be like this, and once I get this, it's going to be like that. Or, often when she heard these facts, she said, that's it. I got to get out of here. But you're here today because guess what? You didn't reject the facts. You received the facts and then you stood in truth. And in standing in the truth, you had to do the same thing Ruth did. Totally relied. Did Ruth know that when they were leaving Moab, that she was going to encounter Boaz? No. She just totally relied. She didn't rely on, watch this here, what, what, what was promised to her, she relied on who was standing in front. I, Na Naomi, where you go, I go. Where you lodge, I lodge. Where you die, I die. Your God's going to be my God. And God says, them the folk right there that's going to break through to that day called redemption. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, despite what it looks like, I'm in it for the long haul. Come on, look at him on the other side and tell him, despite what it looks like, I made up in my mind, I'm going to totally rely on him. And the Bible says, the Bible says that. She told her, she says, go in, get to his feet. She got to his feet. Told her, he says, listen, I'm not going to rest until I make this thing right. He said, but I found out that there's somebody in place before me. That's okay. I'm going to go talk to them. And he went and talked to him. He said, hey, listen, it's not just about the land. There's a lady connected to it. And truth be told, many of us here, we want God to do this, but we don't understand that there are other things that are connected to it. We're dancing and jumping, we're shouting, but there's some other things that are connected to it. So the man, he probably had no problem taking care of the land. But you mean to tell me that there's a lady, and that lady has a mother-in-law? I, 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 I was able to take care of the land, but I didn't know nothing about these two, two other ladies. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, no. I got to take my shoes off on this one. According to the law, when he took his shoes off, what he was simply saying was that, guess what? It's not within my power to do this. So I'm handing it all over to you. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I got some things that are not in my power to do. So I got to hand them all over to God. If we had carpet on this floor, we'd take our shoes off. But he took his shoes off simply to say that, you know what? I'm giving it all to you. You got it. You got it. And that's what God told me to tell you today. Just give it all to him. Give it all to him. Give it all to him. You're dealing with the facts and there's so much connected to it. Give it all to him. Give it all to him. Who am I talking to? Start making your way to this altar. I just want to take a minute and pray for you. Just give it all to him. Give it all to him. I can't handle everything, but I'm giving it all to you. I'm surrendering it all to you. All to Jesus. I surrender all to him. I freely give. Come on, I will ever love and trust. Love and trust. Oh, 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 oh. In his presence. Oh, my. Daily live. Come on, let's go back to the top. Oh, oh, oh to G, I surrender. I'm going to pray for 
you. All to him I freely give. I freely give. Come on. I will ever love and trust. I'm totally relying. Love and trust. In his presence, in his presence, in his presence. Daily live. All right, here's the victory. Everybody, I surrender. Come on, take the roof off. I surrender. I got some stuff I can't handle. I surrender all. That's the deliverance right there. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, all to thee, all to thee, all to thee, my blessed Savior. Come on, I surrender. Come, 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 I want you to lay your hands on. Come on, take the roof off, I surrender. Oh, lay your hands on. Everybody, I surrender. Come on, totally give it to him. That's where the deliverance is. I, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You didn't retreat in this situation. You didn't reject it this time. Oh, hey, hey, hey. my blessed Savior. Come on, I surrender. Come on, come on, come on. That's where the victory is, everybody. For your glory, God. Come on, all to thee. My blessed Savior. Come on, I your neighbor and tell your neighbor there's people connected to that land 
So as God redeems your property, he's redeeming persons. As God restores your prosperity, he's redeeming persons. See it. See it. As God doing this, he's also doing that. Don't you see it? <laughs> As God is fixing this, he's also fixing that. Don't you see it? As God is turning that around, he's turning this around. And as God's turning this around, he's turning that around. Look at somebody tell him he's doing more than what you can see. Oh, my, my, my. <laughs> Listen. We're getting ready to come down from this place. But I feel victory. Look at somebody and tell them, I feel victory. God is redeeming. Hear me, hear me. Ruth made a commitment. Thank you, Jesus. Her commitment was, wherever you go, I'm going. Where you lodge, I'm going to lodge. Your God's going to be my God. And I hear God saying, I need the people to make a greater commitment. God, wherever you lead me, I'm going to follow. And I know sometimes you, you got other voices in your ears and other voices are saying, hey, do you hear the facts? And you're saying, you know what? I got to fight the facts and stand in my truth. Other voices are saying, you know what? I don't know about this. I've seen situations before. But you're saying, yeah, those are facts, but i got to stand in my truth. Mother, you, you hear facts like, you know, Brownlee done did it again. I don't know about this one. Well, guess what? The same God that took us down the street. When you hear the testimony of my 2007, when you hear that testimony, guess what? You're hearing that testimony in a place of victory. Same God that took care of it in 07, took care of it in 08, same God is going to take care of it in 2018. I surrender all. Listen, stay right there. But I want you to understand is that guess what? Look at somebody and tell them I done been through worse stuff than this. Only difference is that I ain't the same person I was back then. Back then, the thought of retreat, the thought of rejection. But right now, you know what my thought is? Totally. <laughs> I'm going to leave here and go eat good. Look at somebody tell me I got to totally rely. Oh, I surrender. I I surrender. I surrender. All right, we get ready to come down from here. Just lean on somebody and tell them all. all to be my, my blessed, blessed Savior. Savior. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I surrender. Deacon Blaine, you and your wife come in. Come and just come right there. I surrender all. I surrender all. Right there. Come on, I surrender all. I we got the serving table. Oh, all to thee. All to thee. My blessed Savior. senior gentleman called me the other day he said did anybody in your church win that 1.6 billion I said you got jokes huh he said no man I just figured I would say that to say this he said you asked God to bless a family in your church real good 
He said, now be careful who you're asking to bless. He said, because that family can turn around and bless you back. And I sat back and I thought about this thing. He said, Reverend, can I help you? I said, yeah. He said, don't ask God to bless nobody who ain't been blessed in the family. I said, oh. And I sat there and I made a list. I made a list of 12 people, 12 families. And when I say family, all of them ain't married, all of them ain't, you know, husband, wife, kids. But I, I made a list and said, Lord, bless these. See, because sometimes you want God to bless you. But guess what? Joshua had no inheritance over there. Oh, y'all don't read your Bible. Joshua took the people to the place called Promise. That guess what? He didn't have no inheritance there. So the people had to bless Joshua. And sometimes you got to be careful because sometimes, you know, God won't send it straight to the priest. He'll give the sacrifice to the people and then tell the people to come. Oh, y'all don't read your Bible. That's why you need to be here on Wednesdays. You hear me? <laughs> and so when I sat down to make that list, I sat there for a minute. And at the top of that list, I don't know if I spelled your name right. I don't know if I spelled yours right. I didn't even put no, I didn't even put deacon elder in front of because I didn't even want God to get it mixed up with nobody else. You know, I said, Lord, Bertrand and Maria have been a blessing to me, to Jason and Sonia. That's how I put it. I ain't putting no titles on another. Don't worry about this stuff. Uh-uh. I said, they've been a blessing ever since they've been here. And when I wrote that down, I felt the presence of God rest upon me. I want you to hear me good. God's getting ready to bless you like you've never seen him bless you before. I'm talking about bless you. In this last season, I hear in the Holy Ghost, you feel like you've been looked over. You feel like you've been left out. But God simply said, I know right where you are. I took you through a test. I put some distance. I put some space just to see if, if, if your connectivity was strong enough to endure it. And God says, you passed the test. You went through a season to where you wondered sometimes, does he trust me? Does he know I'm here for him? I've said it verbally, but does he really recognize it? Yes. Yes. I know y'all pray for me. I know y'all stand in the gap for me. I know y'all hold me up. I know y'all have rebuked people for saying things about me that they should not have said, whether they were facts or not. I know I can depend on y'all. Ain't no question in my mind. With that being said, it was at the top of my list, and I'm one person that God hears my prayers. And I ask God to bless y'all real good. Yes. Hear me as a prophet of the Lord. There's a blessing that's going to rest on your house. There's a blessing that's going to rest on you. That's going to sustain you for the rest of your days. And the reason why God says he's giving it to bless you because he know you're going to come back and not just only bless this house, but you're going to bless the man and woman of God. In the name of Jesus, I come down and I lay my hands on you because unprecedented prosperity is getting ready to rest upon you in the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, it's already done. In the name of Jesus, it's already done. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. name. Somebody open your mouth and say, even me, Lord, even me, Lord. Even me, Lord. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I felt that there. Yeah, 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 yeah. All to thee, all. all to thee. My blessed, my blessed Savior. Blessed Savior. I surrender. I surrender. Come on, clap those hands, everybody. I got to move on. I got to move on. Listen, I want to do this. I did it at 8 o'clock. I did this in the spirit of humility. And I have to do it again in the spirit of humility. I need your help. I told him at 8 o'clock, the Lord spoke to me. And he says, ask the people to help this house. Ask the people to help this house. I talked about humility this morning at the 8 o'clock worship service here. I talked about humility. And one of the things with humility do, it shows great hospitality, hospitality, hospitality. It's very hospitable. There it is. Now, nah, see, you thought that devil is a liar. Amen. I can say big words. Amen. It's very hospitable. But then not only is it very hospitable, 
but it also helps. And when people have the spirit of humility, they don't mind helping. When you have the spirit of humility, you never forget what God brought you from and what God has done for you. Here it is, watch this here. Another place in helping out of humility is that you help folk even when you yourself need help. Oh, come on, somebody. You help even when you need help. And this morning, I asked 50 people if they would do this. And that is sow a seed of $300 to help this house. I say this in all humility to help this house. We're in a season right now where I'm not going to sit up here and stand here. And I talked against pride this morning. And I'm not going to get up here at 8 o'clock and tell you that guess what? Everything is what it is because it's not. Since we've come here, guess what? Some people have stepped back for whatever reason. Some people are watching on social media. Guess what? We're dealing with some demonic attacks. But can I be honest with you? We're winning. I said we're winning. Hey, you, you know, I, I'm going to say this here for about 30 folk that will help me praise him. We ain't behind on nothing. See, 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 a lot of times you, you think when, when they have to ask like this here, oh, Lord, they must be behind. No, we ain't, we, ain't, we ain't behind, but guess what? We ain't way out front where we need to be. And so this is why I'm asking for your help. I'm asking for your help. I need your help. And many of them did it this morning at 8 o'clock, and I'm giving you the same opportunity. I'm going to do it again. I'm, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to give $300 again. Amen. Again. One thing I do, I give to this ministry. When I tell you I give to this ministry, I give to this ministry. A couple of these brothers jumped in the car with me last week. Amen. And I went down and preached in Newport News or whatever and came back and brought every dime to the house of God. Week before that, I was in New Jersey, brought every dime back to the house of God. Before that, I, I, I was in Atlanta, brought every dime back to the house of God. And you know, I'm not saying this to be braggadocious or anything like that, you know, and sometimes, well, why Rev don't let us know he go to these places? Because the last thing I need you to do is not be here. And you think, because I said, I'm in Atlanta next week, you think, oh, he's not going to be here. No, I'll be back here. I don't care if my plane get here at 5.55 on Wednesday, you're going to see me standing behind this desk at 7.30, whether I'm preaching or just in presence. Y'all don't like this here. Yo, oh, oh, with that being said, your schedule is getting ready to pick up like you ain't never seen before. Yes, goodness. I mean, pick up like you ain't never seen before. My God, was it last year, the year before? I think it was 2017. Where we at? 2016, I think it was. I preached out over 47 times. It's only 52 weeks in the year. 2016, I preached out over 47 times. But when I said that to you, I heard the Lord say, I'm getting ready to quadruple that. that, that that's a lot of preaching. Whew. Good. Great. Lord, but you can handle it. You, you, you can handle it. You, they might have to bring them all together, but I don't know how he's going to do it, but, but he's going to do it. And I'm not even talking about limited to the United States. I'm talking about preaching over in Africa in stadiums. My God, I'm telling you what I see. Even in Africa and Europe in stadiums. My God. Ooh. I'm talking about preaching in places. Hear me good when I say it because I feel it all in my back. Watch this here where the platform is larger than this sanctuary. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I know what I see. In the name of Jesus, I need about 20 of y'all jump on your feet and holler glory. Jesus, I, I feel it. <laughs> Listen, I, I need y'all to do that. I need y'all to do that. I'm going to do it again. First lady, prepare my envelope again. I'm, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. I, let, let me tell you something. I love God. I love his people. God knows I do. God knows I do, and I appreciate everything that you're all doing, and you're doing out of humility of heart. You're doing out of humility of heart. I'm going to say something openly. I know some people say, no, don't say it, Bishop. Don't say it. You don't tell me what to say. I'm going to say it. The other week, the church had a need. 
and my daughter's tuition was due. I called the school, told the school. I said, hey, 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 listen, my son went four years there. They said, yeah. I said, yeah, he was on scholarship and he played football at the way. He said, right. I said, put a helmet on my daughter. Put her out there on that football field. You know, let her run up and down. You know, help us with this. Y'all, y'all don't like this. <laughs> Make her to kick her or something. You know what I'm saying? Send him some money. The fella, he just laughed, laughed. He laughed, laughed. And after he finished laughing, I said, do me a favor. Hold that tuition off until the end of the week. I got to take care of something. He said, yeah, I heard you moved into a new church. I said, you did? He said, yes. I said, don't tell me. You're getting ready to send me some money. He said, no, that's not what I'm getting ready to tell you. What I'm getting ready to tell you is that that's fine. Hold the tuition off until the end of, end of next week. I said, I didn't need to the end of next week. He said, okay, well, that's fine. You got to the end of next week. It's not a problem. We ain't going to put your baby out, this, that, and other. I said, okay, all right. And guess what I did with the tuition? I brought the tuition, and I took it to the house of God to take care of things that had to be taken care of here. And I'm saying this to say this. When I took care of that, I went to the bank. When I went to the bank to check my bank balance, I don't know. I, maybe somebody in here know my account number or not. I ain't getting ready to tell it to you. But when I went to the bank to check my balance, there was enough money in there to pay for two tuition notes. Now, y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. I said I gave God his. And then God turned around and go, well, since you're going to do this, I'm going to redeem that. Now, I'm telling you right now, I called the man. I said, hey, sweetie, tell him, hurry up, swipe that card right now. I don't know where that money come from, but tell him, take it out right now. Yeah. Then I went over to Olive Garden and got some endless whatever they got there. Got from there. Said it right, right, right there, right there. And I ate some of them, that wasn't Olive Garden, that was uh, Red Lobster. And they ate some of them cheese, cheese biscuit, but I have to smuggle in my own honey because I don't know how you got biscuits that good, but don't have no honey back there. So I, my pockets was a little sticky, but that's all right. We made it. Speak softly, please. Listen, honor God, and God will bless you supernaturally. Hand me my envelope. I'm going to sow that seed of $300 again. I'm going to do it again. I need, I need some of y'all to stand with me with that $300 seed. Just trust God with it and sow with me that $300 seed. Some of y'all did it this morning at 8 o'clock, and I appreciate it. But I need you to do that. I need you to do that. Since I'm being honest and transparent with you, do you realize we wouldn't have to do this if folk just tithed? We wouldn't have to do this. But Sister Greer, but because some people, they don't show up, and some of these folk that don't show up, they don't give when they show up. I'm just being honest with you. They don't show up. They don't, some of them don't send it. And then when some of them show up, they don't give neither. They take my picture. Yes, they do. They take my picture. That's what you have to do because I look at them on social media. They got pictures of me. I got my mouth open. I ain't got my lips right. You know what I'm saying? And then I took my picture and stuff. Got me looking crazy. And I'm like, you know what? God bless you. I should start charging you for these pictures. You know? But nevertheless, you know what I'm saying? So it's okay. It's okay. That's fine. You want to take a picture of somebody, take a picture of them, you know, do what you do. But after you take your picture, give. Can, can some of y'all stand with me with that 300? If you don't have the 300, give something towards it. This is not your tithing and offering. I'm doing this in all humility, asking you to help us with this here. Help us with it. Amen? To God be all of the glory. Whatever your sacrificial seed is, just bring it from wherever you are. Bring it from wherever you are. Mm. Bring it from where if you right, yes, you can give online. That's fine. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Hey man, how you doing? God bless you. Of Thanksgiving as we offer up. Thank you. To you. The sacrifice. Come on, everybody. We Everybody sing with me. We bring, we bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. As we offer up to you. Thank you, the sacrifice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As we offer up to you. 
This is our sacrificial giving. You all who are watching online, again, I thank you so much for your support of this ministry. I would like to see you in presence, amen, in person. But I want you to take the opportunity to sow a seed into this house today. Amen. And watch God return it back to you a hundredfold, a thousandfold in Jesus' name. Come on, life. Clap your hands and tell God thank you. The sacrifice I pray. Come on, everybody. We bring, we bring the sacrifice of prayer. Oh! 